So we've just finished quarter one and we're entering into quarter two which is April, May and June. So what kind of books can we create? Watch this video and find out. Hello Home Bosses, my name is Nuria Corby from thehomeboss.com. Welcome to my channel which is all about helping you to make money online. And if that sounds interesting to you, please consider subscribing so that you can get notified of any more videos like this. So we have finished quarter one and we are now entering into quarter two. And quarter one was basically January, February, March, and that's now over. And I hope you had a good quarter one. We're now going into quarter two and I hope that you are going to have a really good quarter two as well. And that really um, poses the question, what kind of books can we make for quarter two? So the answer to that is have a look on your calendar. And this is a good chance to remind you that I have a free calendar on my website that you can use. And it's basically a calendar with all the holidays, all the special days that are coming up throughout the year. And on that calendar, it lets you know what kind of days are coming up for the next three months. And that's a really good way to prepare to make your books. Now, I know that the next big holiday is Easter, but it's kind of a little bit late to start producing for Easter. So we really need to always prepare for quarters in the quarter beforehand. So really, we should now be preparing for quarter three. <laughs> so I will go through the quarter two books very quickly, but maybe in my next video, I will start talking about quarter three so that you've got plenty of time to prepare and so that we can make some really good books to have a really good quarter three. So what can we prepare for quarter two, which is coming up right now and we really need to be quick about it, but there's still time to, to do some of them. So let's have a look at our calendar. So this is a calendar that you can download for free from my website. I will leave a link below the video and uh, it goes through every month of the year. But let's have a look at April, which is coming up. So we've got April Fool's Day. You could make some jokey book for that, but it's a little bit too late for that. I think what we really need to concentrate on this month is what we can make for May, because we're a little bit late for April. But just to sort of let you know for next year, um, anything you can make for April would include maybe uh, there's National Pet Day. So you can make books to do with pets, for example, um, a logbook for your dog's um, vaccinations or for your cat's um, medical records. You know, that kind of thing usually sells very well. Then we've got National Tea Day. So th I'm sure there's something we can do for that. Um, and there's St. George's Day here in the UK. So the main celebrations are really Easter but like I said we're a little bit too late for that but there's so much you can do. I know a lot of people are making coloring books or activity books. That's always a good thing to make for Easter or you could make puzzle books or just Easter themed notebooks. Anything like that would be really good for um, for Easter but like I said it's a little bit late this year but it's something to prepare for next year. And there's lots of other days where you can, I'm sure, make some books for. But let's have a look at May because we have time to create something for the month of May. And the big one is really Mother's Day in the USA, which is on May the 9th. Now, in the UK, Mother's Day was um, this month in March at the beginning. And I really did very well for Mother's Day. And this is why I think Mother's Day is really important that you make a book for Mother's Day and make something that's really nice that they can keep. For example, keepsake books, they're always very good. Books where mothers can record their memories or where they can make notes or anything that they would love to keep for the future. That would be a really good um, book to make for, for Mother's Day. And also bear in mind that 
it's a gift. So, so when you look at keywords, make sure that gift is one of the keywords in your uh, seven keyword slots at, in the back end of Amazon. And um, there's just a lot you can make for Mother's Day. There are keepsake books. There are recipes, blank recipe books, where you can write in your own recipes. And that's a really nice gift to give on Mother's Day. They can be log books where people can log in different tasks or different um, wishes or a bucket list, something like that, geared at mothers. That is the main day in May. So Mother's Day is a really important day, but there's also other smaller events that are still worth considering. So for example, the 12th of May is International Nurses Day. There are a lot of things you can create for nurses. I think YouTube is full of videos <laughs> that show you how to create coloring books for nurses, activity books for nurses, notebooks for nurses. There are so many ideas already on YouTube. And um, there's other days as well, World Bee Day. Now, bees are really popular in the gardening world and in the wildlife world. And bees are always a really popular cover design as well. So bear that in mind. And there's also the PGA Golf Championship. So golf notebooks, golf logbooks, anything like that would sell well. Here in the UK, it's the Chelsea Flower Show. It's one of the biggest gardening shows. And gardening in itself is a really good niche for May, June, July, even throughout the spring and summer. And you can make gardening logbooks, gardening notebooks. There are a lot of things, again, that you can create with the gardening niche. And we've got some strange things like National Biscuit Day. I leave that to you to think of a book for that one. It's really the start of um, spring and the better weather. And what comes with better weather is also traveling. Now, because we've had the pandemic, I find that any of my books to do with traveling have really dropped off a little bit. I haven't had many sales in those kind of niches, but things are starting up again. And I think people are going to be really looking forward to traveling. So that is another good niche, traveling holidays, you know, trips abroad, camping, anything like that will be really popular. And that takes us into June as well. There's the beginning of summer. So that's a really, a really nice start, a, a really nice time of the year where you can create a lot of very positive, happy books. Um, people feel a lot better in summer, especially in this country when it's so rainy all the time. So spring and summer is always a much better time. But funny enough, book sales tend to drop off a little bit in the summer months. And that's because a lot of people are on holiday. So it's important that you create the type of books that people still buy during those months. What else have we got? We've got Father's Day in the UK. That's a big day, especially for me. I've got a book that sells very well for Father's Day. So these are the kind of books that you need to create for June. There's also the Glastonbury Festival. So music festivals is another big thing here in the UK. And uh, there are lots of things you could make. You could make a bucket list uh, logbook where people have to write in all the bands they want to see or they, that they have seen. Or you could have um, logbooks with all the countries you've visited, all the countries that you want to visit, like a travel log. There's lots on Amazon. And this calendar is basically going to help you find book ideas and niches. But also the other way to find book ideas is, again, looking on Amazon. I always say that the best way to look for book ideas is going to bookshops. And if we can't go to bookshops, we look on Amazon. The other day, we went to a garden centre here in, in London, in South London, and they had a little section with books, gardening books, children's books. And I got so many ideas just looking through those books. So I'm telling you, it's a really good way to find ideas for your next books. So let's go on Amazon and I'll show you how I would find ideas. And I think I did that in my last video, but let's see if there's any for quarter two that we can find. So let's go on to Amazon and let's go on to the book section. So we now search in books, which is 
not how we normally search, but we're searching for ideas now. So that's different. We're not searching for keywords or niches. We're looking at book ideas and the best way or the best place to look is under books. So what I usually do is I go under new releases because new releases is telling me what Amazon is recommending or what Amazon thinks is going to sell. So if I go on new releases, I can straight away see quite a lot of books there. And what I do is I just go through them and I see what can I use for quarter two. And we just had a look at the kind of holidays, the kind of events that are coming up in quarter two. So we can keep that in mind and have a look through the books here to see if we can adapt anything for quarter two. And the first one that I notice is this one here, how to catch the Easter bunny. So it's an Easter related book. Again, it's a little bit too late for Easter, but for next year, definitely make Easter coloring books for children, Easter activity books, puzzle books, anything like that is always a good idea. And let's see what else we have. There's a few novels, um, food recipes, anything like that is always popular. So there were a few um, holidays that were related to food. I think one of them was National Baking Day. So you could always make a, a recipe logbook for baking, for cakes or for desserts or concentrate on a special niche to do with food. So what else can we find? Um, spooky stories. This seems to be more Halloween related, but it's still there. So it just shows you that books can sell any time of year, even if they have a Halloween theme. It's now quarter two and it's still selling. Let's have a look what else. Um, sometimes it's just a matter of going through all the books and it can take a little bit of time. I like looking through books. If you don't like looking through books, then it's a little bit of a a tough job but <laughs> it's it's I love looking at books so I always get a lot of ideas and I also get ideas for book covers just by looking at them so again there's a lot another um, food related book the 30 day Alzheimer's solutions so I imagine that this is a recipe book um, let's have a look another cookbook here what the road said I'm not sure what this is but this puts me in mind of holidays, you know, roads remind me of road trips, that kind of thing. So that might be a good idea, a road trip logbook <laughs> and uh, maybe a map and map log, uh, a road trip map logbook with little maps. And then you can obviously you'd have to maybe narrow it down to a certain area. So maybe you want to do a certain state in the US and have some roads that you can uh, travel through or in the UK have some roads that you can see different um, sort of tourist attractions something like that would be a good idea for when people start traveling again um, take more vacations again the holiday vibe is coming through <laughs> so let's see what else um, it's not complicated, simple recipes. Recipe books are always good. So again, you know, anything that would be like a blank recipe book, something like that, or when it's summer, people love to eat a lot of salads. So maybe a salad blank recipe book, that would be a good niche, really. Uh, let's have a look what else. We've got lots of cookery books, cooking, um, Easter dot markers activity book. I've seen quite a few videos on dot markers um, coloring books. So here we've got an Easter one. I know it's too late to make this now, but maybe think ahead to another holiday. Maybe a dot markers Father's Day book, something like that, or a dot markers um, holiday book or vacation book, something like that. There's lots of niches that you could apply this to. And what else have we got? How to draw. This might be something that you can do. Um, click on the next page and there's a nice little children's book. Uh, coloring books. This is Joanna Basford's new coloring book, Worlds of Wonder. It's absolutely amazing. If you get a chance to look at this book, 
this is what a good coloring book should be like and it's going to be very hard to compete with something like this because she's an artist but if you're an artist this is the way to do it make your own coloring book and promote it the way she promotes her coloring book she's got a facebook group and i think she's got a facebook page as well and she keeps uh, making videos she has live videos where she shows how to color in and that is a really good way to promote um, a book and what else have we got mm -hmm. a few children's books as well they're always popular talking about children's books i'm still working on my children's book course it's going to be quite a big course i think there is a lot to it but i think it's going to be really exciting. I'm excited. I can't wait to finish making the course so that I can make more children's books because I've neglected that side and my children's books are selling. So it's a really good niche to get into. But you really have to know your niche and know what you're doing. So let's see what happens when the course comes out. But to me, it's exciting. So let me know if any of you have written children's books. That would be quite interesting. Um, let's have a look. What else have we got? More cookery books. So recipe books are always good. Unwinding anxiety. So you could make a relaxation journal, maybe a journal with some nice relaxing quotes. And please think of those quotes yourself. Don't copy any quotes that already exist because you're running the danger of infringing on copyright. But you can think of your own relaxing um, or motivational quotes so if you're good at that kind of thing that's a really good book to make um, but you have to know what you're doing you know if you're not very good at creating quotes then do something else because you don't want to copy other people that's not a good idea you do have to be good at what you're doing so Think of something that you're good at and make books in that kind of niche. So, and we're all good at something. So don't think that there isn't something that you can do. You can. <laughs> so let's have a look. Um, there's a, a growing vegetables book. Now gardening is a big niche and you can break that niche down into smaller niches. So gardening with gardening, you can concentrate on vegetables, growing vegetables. You can concentrate on growing specific fruits or specific vegetables. Like you can have a logbook on growing tomatoes or, you know, where you can write down when do you have to sow your seeds? When do you have to transplant your seeds? When do you have to move them into the garden? You know, that kind of thing is really good for gardeners. So you can make a really good gardening logbook. But again, you have to know a little bit about gardening. So do your research and learn as much as you can about that. So there's another one, my first books of baby signs, 40 essential signs to learn and practice. So that's that's very interesting. Maybe we'll look into that a little bit and see what we can find. So anything baby related is really good, especially now in spring. You know, um, it's a really lovely time if any babies are born now, but any time is lovely. And you can have baby shower log books, baby shower. Um, what are they called? Guest books. Guest books are a really good thing now. Again, during the pandemic, my guest book sales have really slowed. And I'm starting to sell them again now. So I think that's a sign that people are starting to get a little bit back to normal. Guest books are selling again. So have a look at those. And um, weddings, you know, wedding guest books, retirement guest books, any of those kind of things are really good things to make now. So what else have we got? Uh, I spy Easter. Now be careful with I spy because I'm not quite sure, but I think that's trademarked. So I would look into that first. So always make sure that you check if anything is trademarked. And I think this is about it. So we had a few ideas. We found some ideas and um, hopefully that's given you a few ideas for quarter two. So I hope that's given you a few ideas for some books. We're a little bit late for Easter, like I said, but don't worry. 
You can make books for quarter three as well. And if you download the calendar that is free from the website, I'll leave the link below this video, then have a look and see what you can also create for quarter three. The earlier we create the books, the better, because that gives Amazon time to see your books and to um, rank them as well. So you have to really make it as far in advance as possible. So the best thing really is to concentrate on quarter three, but make some for quarter two as well. Like I said, I mean, there's a few big holidays coming up. So um, they are always good for book ideas and for niches. And then all you have to do once you've made a list of ideas, then all you have to do is check for keywords. What kind of keywords can you use? And don't get too um, bogged down with looking for keywords and looking for good niches. I think that getting a good book idea is far more important than finding the magic niche where there's no competition. I think that is going to be quite difficult now anyway. But if you have a good book idea, make your book so that you really like it and you think this is a good book. I would buy this book. Or if you wouldn't buy it, think of somebody that would, you know, think of if you're making a gardening book, ask someone who's a gardener. Maybe you have a friend who's a gardener or a family member and ask them and say, what do you think of this idea? Do you think this would be a good um, thing to make for a gardener and see what they say? And if you have experience in something, then that is even better. So if you've got experience of I don't know, of meditating, then something like that would be quite good. Or if you suffer from anxiety, then you are the best person to know how to overcome this and what could help you overcome this. So if something affects you and you have a solution for it, make a book about it because that is the best way to know that your book is going to be helpful to someone. And at the end of the day, your books to be successful, they have to be helpful for somebody. They have to be solving a problem for someone. And that is the best way to succeed with a book. So let me know what you're going to create for quarter two and maybe for quarter three. And I'll see you again in my next video. Bye bye.